Hello, good evening. My name is Sandra S. and I'm after the time now to do some business. We begin from the Maritime Authority, where the Maritime and Dock Workers Union has called for the immediate review of the Tamaport expansion project contract to ensure that the country is not shortchanged. The build, operate, and transfer project agreements, according to the union, did not go through competitive bidding before it was forwarded to Parliament for ratification. General Secretary of the Union is Daniel Cranting. It's a very good project with a bad contract. And that is what I want to say. It's not as if it's a bad project. In fact, it has been part of the master plan of the um, Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, um, Tamaport, for a very long time. And that we have such a world class um, project should be something that should, that should be good for the business, the continental business for Ghana. Having said so, there are very serious issues with the project. The concession agreement is bad, the processes are flawed, and we have embedded in, in, the, in the concession agreement some provisions that if we don't change them, Ghana will be shortchanged, we will lose you know, massive, there will be massive job losses for Ghana Post and Harbors Authority, and then also for um, other um, um, operators that have been doing businesses in the port. It's, it's like, if we implement the project, then you are getting involved in a zero-sum game where if MPS wins, all other people will lose. And that is, what we, that, is, that is what we have a problem with. And that is why we are asking for a renegotiation of the concession agreement. And not that the project must be abrogated. The project, as I've said, is good, but the deal, the contract, the concession agreement is so bad. It doesn't serve national interest. It doesn't also help in creating job loss, like job they, you know, it doesn't help in job creation, and that is why we have problems. Somebody will ask, why now? Yeah, because I was just going to ask you that, why now, one, and what exactly beyond job losses, which you as a union, probably you are concerned about, what other fine details do you think that must be looked at again? Okay. The issue of why now, I will address that. In the sense that, um, let me be very frank, that if we are a union, and you are speaking, you should speak from a position of knowledge. You should speak from a position of deep understanding of what the situation is. And looking at the way contracts are, um, we, 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 we contract you know, agreements, it is not very easy to come across the details of a certain concession agreement. And that is, that is one issue. So um, sometimes we have a, um, a problem with transparency, and it's not very easy to get you know, the issues coming out clearly. Now to the railway sector, and for two weeks you can actually have a free ride on board one of the newly refurbished coaches along the Accra Tema route. And guess what? It comes with some safety tips like you have on airplanes and a good place to perhaps rehearse and dream about air travel. I was on board uh, for a free ride and guess what? I have the details in this report. <laughs> Save 120 cities or more for the next two weeks by using rail transport from Tema to Accra. This is Ketsi, the Ministry of Railway Development and the Ghana Railway Company Limited. This was one of the goodies announced as the minister relaunched operations on the route. It was an opportunity not to only ride with the sector minister and some dignitaries, but also one of the fastest trips on a traffic reading route from Accra through to Adorna, Asapuchona, all the way to Community One Tema. The newly refurbished coach is one of the several coaches expected to bring life into the rural sector. The difference, though, is pace and a new twist. Well trained train hostess on board giving some safety tips. For today, we are going to have just two stops. That is actually not as and then as a The entire stretch is 30.8 kilometers. Please walk on board. I would like us to take notes. The move is expected to entice former and current clients. Managing Director of the Ghana Railway Company Limited, John Esso, said five coaches have so far been refurbished, with more expected to join soon. Uh, presently, four or five of them are ready, and the rest are still undergoing the various stages of rehabilitation. And then those coaches are those who use to ply between Accra and, uh, what do you call it, in Samoa. Yes, but this type of uh, train that we are riding in 
Uh, this is a different type from the conventional one. We call this the diesel multiple unit. We, in the next one week or so, we'll bring another one from Takradi to beef up the services here so that at least at any point in time you have uh, this service running. While the free services last for only two weeks, you may have to rush to the train station to avoid being left behind since only 600 passengers can be on board at the same time. Currently, the train runs twice daily, morning and evening. It's, however, unclear how much passengers will be paying along the route. The ministry says it is yet to decide with the Ghana Railway Company on how much passengers should pay. But in the meantime, are you wondering where and how to catch a free ride? Here are the details. Okay, so it runs, it starts from Accra. And uh, to Tema Community One and um, arrival time, departure from Tema is 6 10, and then the arrival is 6. Um, actually, it starts at 6 o'clock, and then the departure is 6 10, and then goes to Achapuch, Asof Puchona for between 6 12 and then 6 20, and then to Bachona is 6 22 to 6 46. And then to Bachona is 6.22 and to 6.46 and Achimota is 6.48 and the departure time is 7.10. Odona is 7.12 and the departure time is 7.22. And then from Accra and the arrival time and the time that you can actually board is 7.24 and the departure time is 7.30. Meanwhile, Minister for Tra Railway Development, Joe Gatti, has debunked assertions that the country's current town planning system could not support modern SkyTrain infrastructure. He said experts are of the view that SkyTrains are more economical to put up compared with other infrastructure. They've given it a nice name called SkyTrain, but really, it's a train that's running on a pylon or a bridge. What are we doing? We are not putting our money in that. We are doing it uh, by way of beauty. But the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund has invested in that project. When they bring that feasibility and they give us proposals, and I take it to cabinet, and it's good enough, we'll do it. If the proposal's not good enough, we won't do it. They are saying that because we are not planned, we can't go underground. Some people have said that a is below sea level, and underground is very expensive. The one that is in the media, they are saying that our, our roads are not, let, do not lend themselves out. So in fact, the proponents of SkyTrain, who have brought us the proposal, argue that that is the cheapest way. And so we are waiting. We are cheapest way how much? They, are say, they, they say that it can cost about $10 million per kilometer, give or take. But I've seen light train, really, oh, what do we want to do? We want to provide light train within Accra. This train service is going from Accra to Tema, intercity, suburban. Accra to Tema is kind of joined, so, but you want a train system in Accra. So when you are at Accra Central and you are going to Usu, you can jump onto a train. So you don't think people will say it's over ambitious, it, it, it's not the case? Ambition is not a crime. Away from the railway sector, let's move to the stock market. It's midweek and how activities on the Ghana Stock Exchange. Research analyst with Gold Coast Beta Tubiga is here for an update. So we're halfway through the week and the Ghana Stock Exchange has been faring what the big winners and well last week I actually said this week we're not expecting the market to do like extremely well like we usually see and that's what's happening. Uh, the volumes of shares are traded by close of yesterday's trade. We had forty two thousand three hundred and thirty nine shares trading and from January till now we've had four point eight nine million shares trading on the market, mm -hmm. giving us a value of seven point five zero million Ghana cities. That's from January like beginning of the year till now. But the worth of the equities that traded yesterday was 72,227.49 Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. 14 equities participated in trading on the stock market okay. and we had just one visa. SIC lost um, it lost the peso to close at 21 pesos per share and that's a drop of 4.55% on its opening price. Mm -hmm. It's recording a year-to-date gain of 10.53% and for the past year it's added 110% to investors capital. That's mm -hmm. quite significant. Yeah. If you look at the competitors, it's the second, the third um, returning 
equity in terms of the year to date on the stock market. Mm. The highest is Societe General, which okay. actually this week we're looking at it adding up more, like adding up to its share value. Mm. Currently at 93 pesos, but before close of week, we should see some share price appreciation. Mm. Mm. It's a wrap for now with me, Sandra Essena Mafanuba. When I return in about 30 minutes, we have a conversation on mobile money transactions. Stay tuned, we'll be back. Hello again, let's do more business. The value of transactions carried out on mobile money platforms for last year reached 233 million Ghana cities. This was contained in the latest Bank of Ghana statistics covering electronic payments for 2018. Here's a report by George Yafi. The latest payment systems data from the Bank of Ghana showed that mobile money held at banks hit 2.6 billion cities end in 2018. This represents 13% jump over what was recorded in 2017. Registered mobile money accounts stood at 32.5 million. However, only 13 million are active, representing a 17% jump over what it recorded in 2017. Daily transactions on the mobile platform in the country were over 1 billion valued at more than 200 million Ghana cities. Number of mobile money registered agents was 395,000. However, it appears 180,000 were active. The Bank of Ghana data also puts mobile voice subscribers at 40 million cities ending September 2018. A careful look at the numbers also showed that the various lines and indicators have seen significant increase over the past seven years. Meanwhile, Director of Payments at the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Seto Amediku, tells Joy Business the Bank of Ghana is working on new regulations for the sector. Now that we have had the second reading of the bill in uh, Parliament before the year 2018 ended, mm -hmm. uh, our understanding is that it's led with the third reading, and since Parliament has resumed, we have all the indication and the confidence in Parliament that this bill. Uh, the third reading will be done and this is also going to create a lot of our opportunities mm. for our people mm. because now one thing unique in this bill is that we will have financial technology firms fintechs we have very brilliant Ghanaian students coming out from the universities who have very brilliant ideas how they can develop apps to support the financial sector they can approach the central bank and they can be guided to ensure that they can also support in the particular mm -hmm. uh, uh, section of the whole payment system. In the same way, we have a lot of international institutions and companies that are also interested coming into the Ghanaian payment ecosystem to provide very convenient, safe products and services for our people. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the numbers, Especially those of us coming from uh, Bank of Ghana, our main function is uh, price stability. And price stability depends partly on money in circulation. If we are able to mop up money in circulation, or to formalize the economy, it means that, for example, the recent decision taken by the Monetary Policy Committee to reduce our policy rate from 70% to uh, 16 percent, 100 basis point. You have majority of our people in the financial sector. What that means is that the transmission mechanism will be very smooth and fast. Mm. So as we are mopping more money, more money are now on our phone. It means these monies are now available to the banks to lend. Mm. But it means that all things be equal. If we were not to have mobile money, this 2.6 billion might have been circulating in the economy. And the central bank has to now go and use our instrument at the mm. cost to mop up. Outside the banking system. Yes, Samusi. to mop up this. All other things being equal again for the payment and settlements bill before parliament, when are we hoping that uh, they will finalize so that they, it should come into force very soon? Now, now that it is in the domain of parliament, mm. it's, I think it's outside the control mm. of the central bank. But what we hope for is that it will be soon passed as a result of the general interest everybody has shown in it 
And uh, if it is passed, we know that it's going to support government agenda. And we are also very happy to know from the budget, government bold decision to digitize all payment. its receipts and payments. Mm -hmm. And even just this morning, I heard uh, on air that uh, passport forms purchase is going digital. Mm -hmm whereby you pay with mobile money. That is the good news for government. Me, government cannot trace its revenue, for example, from the sale of passport. Mm -hmm. And even when we are preparing the 2020 budget, you can get a reliable record in projecting how much government will get Fun. for uh, in terms of revenue with the sale of forms. Mm -hmm. I like the current system where uh, sometimes they are sold at the bank, Some maybe some staff at the uh, some institutions may also be selling manually, which may be very difficult. Mm. To the commodity market now, crude oil went up marginally and it's selling at $61.85 a barrel today. Time now for the commodity news. In international news tonight, former um, Nissan boss Carlos Ghosn is making some wild allegations about some executives of Nissan. We have the details plus other, plus other stories next in international business. The United States and Venezuela are going through a painful divorce that will have a sweeping consequence for the global oil industry. The U.S. oil prices surged 3% on Tuesday after the Trump administration imposed sanctions on PDVSA, Venezuela's state-owned oil company. The penalties are meant to speed the demise of Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro's to speed the demise of Venezuelan president's regime by starving his government of cash. Former Nissan boss Carlos Ghosn is claiming a plot against him by Nissan executives caused his spectacular downfall. In his first media interview since his stunning arrest more than two months ago, Ghosn told Japanese news organization that he had no doubt that the allegations against him are as a result of plot and treason by Nissan executives who oppose his plan to deepen the automobile's integration with its French partner Renault. <laughs> Apple's iPhone business is in decline, and there appears to be no end in sight. Apple said Tuesday that iPhone revenue for the all-important holiday quarter fell 15% from the same period a year ago, a steep drop for a product line whose sales growth defied gravity for years. The shrinking iPhone sales led to Apple's first holiday quarter revenue decline since 2000. Apple posted revenue of $84.3 billion for the quarter, slightly better than it had warned investors to expect earlier this month. <laughs> Back here in Ghana, the National Insurance Commission is set to announce new minimum capital requirements for the insurance sector. Details in our local summaries. Securities and Exchange Commission has warned the public against dealing with six fund management companies. They include HFC Capital Partners, Atai Capital Limited, Serengeti Capital Limited, Indigo Investment Management Limited, Verit Investment Advisory Limited, Waxen Investment and Pension Management Limited. They have been ordered to cease operations with immediate effect. Import Bank, Exim Bank, is to extend a $1 million loan facility to Aztec Ghana Limited to revamp the foods processing operations of the company at Insawam in the eastern region. According to a graphic online report, the loan will be used to procure foods processing machines and other equipment to pave the way for the start of operations in September 2019. Bilateral trade. 
Bilateral trade between India and Ghana increased from $2.62 billion in 2010 to $3.34 billion in 2018. Between April and October last year, trade between the two countries amounted to $2.6 billion, with India exporting goods worth $4.75 billion to Ghana and importing goods amounting to $2.15 billion. That's all about our business tonight with me, Sandra Essenama. For more news, do log on to our website, myjawline.com forward slash business. Thanks so much for your time and have a great evening.